Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Your hallelujah has a very low battery. Can somebody praise the Lord? Hallelujah. I thought we have over 200 people in the house by my estimation right now. And I wouldn't lie to you. The hallelujah I can hear right now cannot even warm this place up. And it's freezing outside. I see, see some people dress the way I'm dressed because I'm from the West Coast. So somebody, if you know that you have made it already, that in spite of everything that has happened this year, from January to June, from June to December, even though that the odds were against you, that you are not going to make it, but you're here tonight, that means you have made it. Praise the Lord, somebody! Our God is good. And all the time, I don't know if you're excited as I am excited. But I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I am somebody. Even though you have your natural hair and the person beside you have Brazilian, Peruvian, and Himalayan. Tell them that, neighbor, I am somebody. Even if the person be beside you is wearing a Louis Vuitton shoe or a Louboutin shoe, but you're wearing your shoe from Payless, tell them, neighbor, I am still somebody. Even though if the person sitting beside you drove here in a Bentley, a Bugatti, a Rolls Royce, or a Lamborghini, but you came here on a ride with a friend, tell them that neighbor, I am still somebody. Can I get a big amen? Thank you, Jesus. Because a lot of time people come into the church lamenting. The Bible says in the presence of God, that is not bigger. In the presence of God. You see, I keep telling people, that I noticed that ever since I got to America, that four out of every 10 commercial is about commercials that will make you feel bad about yourself. But you see where we come from? We know that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Can you talk to your neighbor and say, neighbor, yeah. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You see, as a result of coming to America, a lot of us have changed. Some of us came here with six pack, but now you have amusement park. Ah, uh, but that is not enough for you to now feel that uh, you're still not somebody. You know what I mean? The activities of Burger King and El Pollo Loco and McDonald's has enlarged your coast. But the Bible says, uh, I will enlarge your coast and comfort you on every side. Can I get an amen? Our God is good. And all the time, some of you, because unlike every other person, because you see, we believe where we come from, that being big has, is an evidence of good living. Contrary to what they believe in America, where you're big, you're unhealthy. No, where we come from, being big is a sign of the goodness of God. Because that means that the Lord has enlarged your coast. <laughs> but some of you here, you've been in America over 10 years. You came here size 8. You're still size eight. I to your neighbor, I tell them that the Bible says narrow is the way that leads to heaven. <laughs> so by virtue of your size, you are guaranteed of going to heaven. <laughs> Can I get an amen? amen? Our God is good. Amen. And peradventure, if it is rapture that comes first, you know the lighter you are, the easier it is for the wind to carry you. <laughs> Can I get an amen? amen? Our God is good. Every time everybody tries to tell you something that will make you feel bad, no. For every part of you that you don't like, the Bible has encouraged you. If you have big head, the Bible says you are the head and not the tail. If you have big eyes, the Bible says as far as your eyes can see, I will possess the land for you. So the bigger your eyes, the bigger the land is going to give you. Don't let anybody make you feel inferior. Some of you, because you, because you have added to it, you are so big, you are fulfilling the scripture. You are an African shape that science has declared as matter, anything that has weight and occupies space. <laughs> Can you touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, I am a matter. I have weight and I occupy space. <laughs> Glory to God. That is what I'm talking about. Bible has described you as good measures, pressed down, shaking together and running over. You are fulfilling the scripture. You need to read your Bible well so that most people will make you feel inferior. And I noticed that you guys have a very good tradition in this church. You know how to connect to the Almighty. I noticed that when praise and worship was going on, people were coming here and giving their money's worth. Let me tell you something. Between you and I, I grew up in the church. I'm a pastor's son. There's nothing God likes than your offering. God loves our offering so much that he said 
that if you are going to the altar to give an offering and you remember that you're having a fight with your brother what did the bible says you should do he said you should leave the offering before you go and settle. Why did he say you go and settle first? Why didn't God ask you, oh, go with your money, I don't need it. He said drop the offering and go settle with your brother. Can I get an amen? amen. Jesus didn't ask you to go with your offering. He didn't say because you are fighting with your brother, go with your offering. God loves a cheerful. That's why you guys are rich in this church. You know how to tap. Let me tell you something. There is nothing new under the sun. For those of us who think that everything you're seeing now is new, I can prove to you that it's been from time immemorial, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall it be world without an end. Because they said that when Moses went on the mountain, he came back with two tablets, one Samsung, one Apple. They didn't just say which one was which, but he came back with two tablets. And you guys are thinking everything just started now? Even when Jesus Christ was around, they said Jesus Christ and his disciples were with one accord. That's Honda. And they said John the Baptist was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. That's Toyota. Two Japanese products by Jesus alone. Everything that you're seeing right now I started from time immemorial. Can I get a big amen? amen. And let me tell you, God was, has been around yesterday, today, and forevermore. That is why he allowed some things to happen when they happen. Because if it was now that the issue of Abraham and Moses and everything has been up, it would have been totally different. With this new media that you guys have, social media, Abraham taking Isaac for sacrifice, and you know how kids can ask questions. Daddy, where are we going? We're going for sacrifice. Daddy, what are we going to sacrifice with? Don't worry, the Lord will provide. We just bring out his phone. Selfie. <laughs> and you will see the heading. Sacrificial things. <laughs> and his friend will tell you, uh, Isaac, your daddy is taking you for sacrifice. There's a knife, there's a rope, there's no goat. I think you're the sacrifice. <laughs> Everything happened at the right season. And I will let you know. I see by virtue of you making it here, I tell people, if you're African, and God has brought you here, and you've made it here to America, the land of dreams. There are some prayer points you need to leave behind. <laughs> you don't bring it to America anymore. Tell him, Pastor, Pastor, please pray for me. I need direction. This is America. Go and buy GPS. <laughs> you tell Pastor, oh, Pastor, I need God to elevate me in America. Almost everybody has an elevator. Enter one, elevate yourself. If God has brought you to America, there are some things you leave behind. And let me tell you, we are seeing signs that we are at the end of times. Because you check in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, so what, are, what will be the signs of the end when the disciples ask Jesus? He said, in the last days, kingdom will rise against kingdom, nation against kingdom, father against son, son against father. All these things are happening. Last year, a whole airplane, Malaysian airplane, with 147 members on board, disappeared. Phew. Modern science could not find it. Trust us. Everybody stepped up their prayer lives. Especially those of us who travel regularly. Especially where I come from, Nigeria. You know Nigerians don't pray with prayer. Ever since then, whenever I want to travel, I call pastor. I say, pastor, I'm about to go to Atlanta. It's four hours, 50 minutes. <laughs> Start praying from now. If after four hours or five hours you don't hear from me, intensify your prayer. <laughs> and I noticed that ever since that happened, even regular Americans who don't pray before they board the plane, they started praying. I noticed that whenever people want to board, they touch the entrance of the airplane. They mumble something to themselves. I don't know what they are mumbling. They mumble something and they just go inside. I'm like, I, I don't know what you guys are mumbling. I don't know who is tired of life. Whoever wants to die, it is not with me on board. So I say my own prayer. So when I get to the entrance, I touch the entrance too. I look to left and right. I say, Father, I am about to fly now. This plane, as it's flying, it will land. Every attempt for this plane to disappear, I cancel it now. In Jesus' name, I pray. But trust Nigerians to take that prayer to the next level. When every other person wants to pray, they pray at the entrance. But the real Nigerians, the very, very confident Nigerians, will not pray at the entrance. They first go in, sit down, bring out their phone. They'll be chatting. When the pilot announced, ladies and gentlemen, 
fasten your seatbelt, switch off all electronic appliances. We are about to fly right now. That is when the Nigerian will now start praying. Confidently. Especially my brothers from the East. Ibo Kwenu. Kwenu. Where's Wenu? You see, these people are so confident. They feel every time they pray to God, they need to reintroduce themselves. So when the typical, typical Igbo man wants to pray, you just say, Chinuke God, how are you? It is your boy, Chukode. Importer. Exporter. Pure water. Five, Ibing Pejole, Dumata, Lagos. Shop five, Lin two. I am about to fly now, oh God. And you know that this plane cannot disappear. You know why? I am the chairman building committee in my church. This plane disappear, your money will disappear. In fact, for your information, as we are flying right now, your tithe and offering is in my pocket. This plane disappear, your money disappears. So therefore, for your own goodness sake, this plane must land, or else you will lose your money. Even while he's flying and there's turbulence in the air, and people are shouting, blood of Jesus, blood of you, say, remember, remember your money. <laughs> Let's give our people a big round of applause. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, um, how many of you are Americans in the house? When I say Americans, I mean real Americans. <laughs> I mean... Born a race. I'm not talking about those of us who came here and they gave us blue passports. We know ourselves. Because in case you don't know, if you're a Nigerian and American, wait until something hits you in the head. Instead of saying, ouch, you hear, yay! That's how you know you're a real American. Okay? Now, if you're a real American, born a race in the house, let me see your hands up. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is because, you see, God is so wonderful. He has created all things wise and wonderful, all creatures great and small. Amen? But you see, as a result of our cultural background, we all have different ways of reacting to stuff. We all have different ways of viewing things. For example, romance in America is very easy. It's very subtle. You guys give attention to infinitesimal stuffs, everyday things that we overlook. Like the average American couple, I don't care how long they've been married. Anytime you see them in, the couple, in, the, in public places, you see them holding hands, looking into each other's eyes, saying sweet nothings to themselves. Honey, they even call them names by the names of their food. Honey, sugar, pudding, Burger King. Everything is so easy. No matter how old they are, when you see them in public, they are holding hands. At the mall, they are holding hands. When you see an African man do the same thing at the mall, holding his wife's head, it's not because he's being romantic. He's being economic. Because he knows if he leaves his wife's hand, she'll go and finish the credit card. So if you hold her hand at the honey, you are not going anywhere. Today, your people is my people. In America, they have what we call chivalry. When you see a couple going out on a date, no matter how long they've been married, you will see the husband will tell the wife, hold on, honey, you go around the car, open the door for his wife. The wife will sit down, you will lock the door, go around again, open his side, and enter. When an African man does that, in fact, don't even bother to ask him. <laughs> say, honey, will you go and open the door? You say, what is that nonsense? <laughs> Am I your servant? We don't see that as being romantic. So when you see an African man do that, two things are involved. Is either the wife is new or the daughter of that guy is bad? <laughs> Our idea of romance is totally different. <laughs> now you people can be here and you can walk on the beach and you look in the sky. You say, honey, look at the sky. Look at the way the stars are blinking and the sun is setting and the moon is about to come out. The husband too, I think he has nothing to do. He will say, yes, honey, it's true. <laughs> now you tell an African man that. You say, honey, the way he will answer you, will know that everything is not well. <laughs> honey, uh-huh. <laughs> because every time you call an African man honey, you will think you want to ask him for money. 
So once you say honey, you say, hey, what is it again? How much do you want? He said, no, I just want you to look at the sky as the sun is setting. The next question is, is everything all right with you? So you are just seeing the sun for the first time? Should I call your doctor? Our idea of romance is totally different, which is why we're trying to bring our African husbands to come and have romantic times with their wife. You see, this church has a vision for everybody, whether you're married, engaged to be married, or you're just believing God, that one day God is going to send your number to the man of your dreams. Because you see, some just believe that wherever they are, the Holy Spirit is just going to send your number to your man of your dreams. You see the way singles pray in this part of the world. You pray like you don't have anything to lose. I was in the church one day where I heard these single sisters praying to God. And they pray like God and them see face to face every day. Uh, Daddy, <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm just tired of being single, okay? I'm not going to impress anybody no more. Just have my number. Send it to my dream man. It is 818-736. I'm like, what? So Holy Spirit should go and give you a number. Where in Nigeria, you pray and you have not shouted. They don't believe you have anointing. <laughs> we pray that even God, where he is sitting down, he will know that something is amiss. I say, Father, where is my husband? Bring him, bring him, bring him. Relocate, bring him. Come here, come him. Anywhere, east, west, north, south. Bring him. Fire. Holy Ghost. In fact, sometimes our prayer point is afraid. Sometimes the way Nigerians pray, our prayer go amiss. They will tell you, shout Holy Ghost seven times. Blood of Jesus seven times. Holy Ghost fire seven times. By the time you do that, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Blood of Jesus, you have forgotten the prayer points. <laughs> it is God that will now be telling you, oh yeah, I'm listening. What is your prayer point? You don't even know anymore. We pray as if God is far away from us. I say, Father, even God knows that these people have come again. Nigerians are very special people. That's why I tell people that when rapture happens, the Nigerians that will be left behind, they will show devil pepe. Because before devil starts selling mark of B 666, Nigerians are already selling 999. They will be selling in traffic, yes. Buy your, buy your, buy your mark, buy your mark. 666, devil is selling, we are selling 999. By the time devil is moving to 999, they are already selling 121212. Yes, buy your mark. God knows. That is why he didn't make Jesus come from Nigeria. If Jesus was from Nigeria, the blood would not be free. You guys are going to be buying that blood. You hear people tell blood of Jesus in traffic. Yes, buy your blood, buy your blood. Original blood of Jesus, $20 per liter. Diluted blood of Jesus with holy water, $10 per liter. Buy your blood, buy your blood. If you have seen today, we'll come and wash your sins away. Buy your blood, sister, buy your blood. Nigerians are just a special kind of people. We don't play. It's as a result of this, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, can you punch it on the screen? Uh, this blessed church, we're putting together a program around, um, it's a three day program. Our Father in the Lord. Is going to organize with the church. We're organizing a three day program, relationship program. So, whether you're single, you're married, engaged to be married, or you're believing God that when you touch the hem of somebody's garment, they shall be made whole. This program is for you. If you've been married 10 years, 5 years, 20 years, or you're like me who's been in the business for over 30 uh, weeks, you can still come. Um, it is called a love affair. Uh, we're going to distribute this to everybody. And they're also going to punch it on the screen. That is it right there on the screen. You see, this is why I love the modern day touch. Everything is so high tech. You know, not like those days where you say, everybody, you must bring your Bible to church. Nowadays, your Bible is on your phone, OK? So when they say, uh, open your Bible to the book of Matthew 7, 7. You ain't got no Bible? Bring your iPhone and Google Matthew 7, 7, OK? You don't have a uh, iPhone? All right, let's punch it on the screen. High-tech church. Now I can talk and everybody can hear me, even people outside. Gone are those days where you just shout and you have high BP <laughs> because of the love of God. So um, how many of you know where Villa Cristina is? 
you know it's a very high-end luxurious place so we're not uh, we're not uh, we're not uh, being cheap with this we're giving everybody luxury luxury bring your partner there are some of us here we've not taken our partners out in years the Lord does not like it <laughs> if you're here you've not taken your partner out in a long time the Lord does not like it yes. do you know that there's a blessing that comes with you taking care of your family yes. how many of you know that yes. so please the church is trying to help you to tap into that blessing uh, it's called graced to love building better relationships because there are some of you here we can't remember the last time you look at your wife in the eyes and smile and say something romantic i remember a couple in nigeria the wife look, looked at him and said honey can you tell me something romantic he looked looked and looked he said can you do the dishes please because some of us that is just the best we know nothing romantic how many of you uh love the spoken word that we heard tonight uh, how many of you know that your subconscious mind record things that you do not plan to record because if you keep listening to a particular music over a period of time what do you find yourself doing you're singing it that's your subconscious mind how many of you know that also when you're sleeping your subconscious mind is awake so whatever you're listening to can infiltrate into your dreams how many of you know that good so by that way you can fill your spiritual life up even when you're sleeping those who came with spoken word they have a cd you can play it while you're sleeping and the spoken word can minister to your mind even while you sleep because when your subconscious mind is filled with the word of god there is no way the devil can infiltrate into your dream all those people who something is chasing in their dream they can't chase you when you're listening to the word of god if all the masquerade in your village is coming into your dream they can't come when they're spoken word it is what you do before you sleep some of you you will drink gallons and gallons and gallons of water you now dream that you are swimming it's your fault <laughs> So when you get the audio or DVD you play while you're singing, it will minister to you. And also, how many of you know that laughter is good for the mind? I also brought my old CD too. Now this one is special. Everyone who has bought this has given testimony. A lady who's been married 10 years, no child, listen to this. Now she's expecting eight children. A <laughs> brother bought this. He's been looking for a wife for 10 years. He bought this CD now. Four multi-millionaire ladies are running after him. <laughs> Another brother graduated three years ago, no job. He bought this CD, listen to it. He said two weeks ago, somebody came to drop a million dollars and ran away. <laughs> I see you guys looking like you want to buy the CD now? You want to buy the CD now? You better buy it. I'm from, I'm from Lagos. You don't buy this CD, I will puncture your tire. Let us give the Lord a big hand. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a big hand. Give the Lord a big hand. I want to seize this opportunity to thank the man of God that God has put in charge of this house with the vision that God has given him and the way he has been blessing us and blessing the whole life. Let's give our Papa a big round of applause. Thank you. Now, one more thing. There's a general saying that behind every successful man, there is a strong woman. You see, most people are under the erroneous impression that men of God don't express love to their wife. Papa, they think that when Papa addresses his wife, he does not use the regular word you guys use, that sugar, honey, pudding. They think Papa, they think you call Mama anointing oil. <laughs> or living water. And she too will look at you and say, my holy communion? They are human beings like you and I. Please give a round of applause to the mama of the house. Stand on your feet and appreciate her. The man and woman of God that God has put on you. Life of you. Thank you very much. God bless you. Happy 2016. 
is our year of unprecedented blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Let somebody shout hallelujah.